What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So it's been a bit since we've talked about doing more advanced shapes using uh, some extensions for SketchUp. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about combining TIG's extrusion tools with TomTom's quad face tools. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I'll link to the two extensions that we're gonna use in the notes below this video. But basically we're gonna start by creating a shape um, that um, is some curves extruded along a path using, using extrusion tools. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna start just by drawing an arc. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna create an arc. It's gonna look something like this. Now this might be something that we might see on like a bus stop or a train station, something like that, um, that's going to be a surface. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the rotate tool. So I'm gonna tap the Q key and then the left arrow key, and I'm gonna rotate this, but I'm gonna tap control in order to move into copy mode. And so what we have is we have the object in here that's gonna act as our first profile. And one thing about using extrusion tools is you need to make sure that the profile that you use is a full curve, right? So if I select this right now, it's just saying that it's a number of different edges that are in here. Well, we wanna select these both, right click and click on weld edges, which uh, I think is a feature that got added in like SketchUp 2020 or 2021. Otherwise you might have to download the weld extension. But what we wanna do is now we wanna create some side pieces because we want this to kind of like move up and down, right? So again, this is just kind of making a path and I'm just gonna draw an arc like this. And then I'm gonna use the uh, rotate tool in copy mode to copy this right here. And we wanna go ahead and we wanna select those and we want to weld those edges. So now what we have is we have a profile here and a profile here. And we could just start here, right? So we could just use the extrude edges by rails, click on this, and then click on this and just use these two profiles in order to generate this surface. So we could do that, but we're gonna get a little more complex in here, but I'll at least show you what that would look like. So that's gonna give you a surface that's kind of like this, but this surface is a little bit boring. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this curve and I wanna use the move tool in copy mode. So I'm just gonna create a copy of it. So tap M, tap control, and then copy this over. And then I'm just gonna use the scale tool in order to flip it in place. And then I'm gonna move it back. Because remember that extrusion tools gives us the ability to use multiple different rails and multiple different profiles. And we'll do the same thing over here. So I'm not sure exactly what this one is gonna to do to our result, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway. So now we've got a curve and a curve and a curve and a curve. And I'm actually gonna make a copy of this because we're also gonna do something kind of interesting with it just to see what it'll do in a minute. But now we can use extrusion tools and I wanna activate the extrude edges by rails. And I'm gonna start by picking this as my profile and then these are going to be my two rails. Rails are basically the paths along which something gets extruded. But then you can also pick a melding profile, which basically means that this curve is going to, over the course of this path, transition into this curve right here. And so what I wanna do is I wanna say no here, yes here to reverse the faces. Then I wanna say yes for quad faces. And so what that's going to do, and I'm not going to erase my original curves, is that's gonna give me my final curve in here, like this. And so what I don't like about this is this melding profile is actually averaging to flat across the middle, right? So maybe what we're gonna do is we're gonna erase out this curve right here, because I think it's gonna give us a better result. So I'm just gonna run this again. We've got rail, rail, and then we'll just make our original, our melding profile. I think that gives us a better result. So we're going to go ahead and reverse those faces. We're going to make these quad faces. And I shouldn't have reversed those. So I'll just do a control A and reverse those faces like this. So what that's done is that's given us this curve right here or this surface right here. Now real quick, before we move on to the next step, you could use another function that's built into this tool to use this to create a lattice. So there's a function right here called extrude edges by rails to lattice. And it'll basically generate the surface, but it'll go a step further and make like a glass lattice using the surface. Now, the reason I'm not doing this a lot is because I don't really like the result that it creates. So if I click in here and I pick my profiles like this, and go back to this rail, um, it's going to ask me if I wanna create a lattice. And the answer is yes from profiles and rails. And I'm gonna create that lattice as a 3D shape. 
I'm gonna click on OK. And then it's gonna allow me to come in here and set this as a lattice. So in this case, I'll set my lattice material to default. I'll set my pane to glass. And we're gonna say this is pretty narrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to one and one. We'll set this to 0.5. We're gonna click on OK. And so what that's gonna do is that's actually gonna come in here and it's gonna extrude every one of these faces. Um, so it's gonna offset it, extrude it, and then add a glass pane in here. So then we're gonna go ahead and click on no right here. And so that does create a really cool lattice in here, but it doesn't necessarily reflect what we would like right? Because these are all diagonal. But you can use this in order to create those cool lattices if you do want to do that. What I want to do instead is I want to take this shape that I created. I'm going to go ahead and create a copy of it over here. And so the cool thing about this is this did get created as quad geometry, right? So that basically means that every piece of geometry in here has four sides. That means we can use the extension quad face tools from TomTom Tom in order to help us with our selection. So what I want to do is I want to double click into this object and coming in here and selecting every one of these edges, if I wanted to come in here and do that, would be a little bit problematic just because it would be time consuming. Well, the reason that quad face tools is so powerful is because it allows us to select loops. So what that means is that means I could go to a top down mode like this and I can select every other one of these like this and I can just pick up an individual piece, right? So an edge an edge like this. So I have every, every, every other one of these selected. Well, then I can come in here and I can click on the option for select loop. Well, notice how when I select the loop, what it does is it goes through and it selects all the way across here. That's known as a loop with quad geometry. Well, what that means is that means that I can now come in here and I can move this up like this. So I can move all of these edges up or down like this and leave the other edges as they are. So. I can tap the up arrow key in order to lock this up and down, but this now allows me to create this really cool like uh, panel look, um, as if we had something that was like uh, mimicking mountains or something like that. All right, and since we're using extrusion tools anyway, let's go ahead and let's use it to create some uh, supports for our canopy here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my four corners just by drawing lines down. Actually, I only need to find two corners. So I'm just gonna draw two lines down and then draw a rectangle like this. That gives me kind of the footprint of where the base of my canopy is going to be. And we're going to assume that we're going to add a few support posts on the ends and on the sides here. So I'm going to go ahead and group this because we're just using it as kind of a guide location. And what I want to do is I just want to come in here and I want to draw a rectangle. So, and we'll say it's maybe 12 by 12. So 12 inches by 12 inches. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create an array. So I'll use the move tool in copy mode to create one copy and then type in the forward slash and two in order to make that two copies. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing over here. So select these, tap M, click, tap control to go into copy mode. And we're gonna go ahead and click over here. Then we're gonna type in a forward slash and a three and hit the enter key. And so what we've done is we've created the profiles that we're gonna use in order to create our support posts. So before I do this, I usually like to save, but then I'm just gonna select these and I'm gonna deselect this surface. Well, there's a tool in here called extrude edges by vector to object. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to extrude our edges and it's going to find the intersection point with an object. So if I click, what it's gonna do is it's gonna extrude all of these up like this until they intersect with an object. And I'm gonna say no, no. And so notice what that did is that extruded our objects up and it, found the in and it found the intersection point between those objects and our surface right here. And like I said, you could use an extension like joint push pull in order to thicken this if you wanted to. But you can use these principles in order to start creating more complex shapes using extrusion tools with SketchUp. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything we talked about. I will link to more extrusion tools tutorials on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.